In this video, we're going to learn how to simulate a dice roll using C++. So a typical dice will have six sides from one to six, and when we roll the dice, we'll get one of those sides as a result. So one, two, three, four, five, or six. So to simulate a dice roll in C++, we're going to need to generate random integers. So we'll include the C stdlib library because this library includes a function called rand that's going to return a random integer. Now we'll also want to seed the random number generator and we'll do that using the srand function that's in this library. Now we're going to use the current time as the seed value. So we'll also include the seed time library because this library includes a function called time that's going to return the current time. So the first thing we'll do is call srand to seed the random number generator, and we're going to provide the seed value as an argument. In order to ensure the rand function could provide a different sequence of random integers each time the program runs, we need to supply a different seed value each time the program runs. Now the current time is going to be different each time the program runs. So here, if we call time and provide the function with the argument null, time is going to return the current time. So the time function is going to return a value of the type time underscore t, but the srand function expects a value of type unsigned int as an argument. So here we'll have unsigned int and we'll do a typecast to ensure that srand is given an argument of the correct type. Next, we'll declare an int variable called roll that's going to store our dice rolls and we'll initialize it to zero. So when we call the rand function, it's going to return a random integer in the range of zero to some very large positive integer, but we want a random integer in the range of one to six. What we can do is take this integer that rand returns and apply modulus six. So the modulus operator is going to return the remainder of dividing by six and the possible remainders when dividing by six are zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So this is going to give us a random integer in the range of zero to five. If we take this and add one to it, that's going to shift that range up and we'll have a random integer in the range of one to six. Let's try this out. Here we'll have roll is equal to rand and we'll apply modulus six and we'll take the result of that and we'll add one to it. Then we'll output roll. So down here we'll have C out dice colon and we'll output roll followed by an end line. And if we save our program and compile it, we'll get here dice four. We'll try again, dice one, dice two, four, five, six, one, two, and it seems to be working. Now a dice could have a different number of sides than six, and we could handle that case too. So here we'll declare an int variable called sides, and we'll initialize sides to 12. Then here, instead of modulus six, we're going to have modulus sides. And this is also going to work because rand is going to return the random integer in the range of zero, to some very large positive integer. And then because sides is set to 12, we're going to have modulus 12. And this is going to give us an integer in the range of zero to 11, because those are the only possible remainders when dividing by 12. And plus one is going to take that and shift it up to the range of one to 12. So now we can try this out. We'll save, compile and run our program and we get 1, 3, 10, 12, 7, and now we're getting integers in the range of 1 to 12. So this is also working. And this is going to work when sides is set to any integer that is greater than or equal to 1. We could also roll multiple dice by putting this logic inside a loop. So we'll declare an int variable called dice, and we'll set it to the number of dice that we want to roll. So if here int dice is equal to, let's say 10, then we'll create a for loop with a counter variable i that's going to start off at one 
and it's going to go up until it's equal to the number of dice, and we're going to increment i by one with each loop iteration. So this loop is going to run dice number of times. And inside the loop body, we'll put our code to perform the roll. So we'll cut this and paste it here inside the loop body, and we'll output the dice number here. So we'll have dice and then space, and we'll output i, and we'll output colon space, and then output the roll. And we can save, compile, and run the program. And now we'll get 10 dice rolled. We could try again, and we'll get different numbers. So this is how we can simulate a dice roll using C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.